Hello and welcome back to my series of writing or trying to write a Pong clone in the Bevy game engine. The last time we worked through the Bevy book and tried to understand how the Bevy, uh, how Bevy's ent entity component system actually worked. So now I'm going to go through uh, some examples um, provided by the Bevy game engine so that I can find out what features I addition need in addition to make sure the um, the Pong can be implemented, the Pong clone. So let's take a look. We have some 2D, 3D app, asset, audio diagnostics, entity component system, game input, scene, shader, UI and window examples. Let's take a look. run an example use the command cargo run minus minus example and add the option minus minus features x11 or minus minus features Wayland to force the example to run on a specific window compositor so this is how you would run the examples if you have cloned the bevy repository i mean we, we could just do that let's take a look just go to the desktop get clone let's clone bevy and let's go to the bevy directory cargo run minus minus features I'm currently on x11 because um, OBS doesn't record the screen uh, in Wayland sessions at least not yet I think it might be possible once pipe wire is is there I guess I mean can be used so let's start just start with the hello world example just to find out how it works A hello world and we probably need to go to the uh, examples directory I guess quite a bin target must be available for cargo run what am I doing wrong so I can build it oh I think this line is just incorrect. I, I need to run cargo cargo run minus minus example. Not just cargo run minus minus features Wayland hello world or in my case x11 hello world, but I need to add minus minus example, which I'm now going to do. And looks much better. I guess I will make a small pull request. So this is fixed and the next person doesn't need to uh, work this out. Oh, actually, I'm not I'm not logged into GitHub right now because I'm in a special browser session just for this occasion of recording a YouTube video. So I'm guess what I, I guess what I'm going to do is just on the second screen I'm gonna log into github and that should be great like in the different in a different browser uh, I, I'm just gonna stop recording for a minute and um, I'll be back with a logged in github session so now I am actually logged in, as you can see, and I'm going to fix this example. So it actually ran, oh no, this is my pass, I'm going to close this, at least it didn't show my password. <laughs> 
so this works. And I'm gonna change this. This is the readme.md file. I'm gonna use the online editing functionality of GitHub. Should be okay for just fixing typos. Minus minus example. Preview the changes. Come on. All right. Yeah, right. I need to reload. So, so the change is gone. Let's take another look. Seems fine. So what just happened is I didn't enable JavaScript for the domain githubassets.com, which is apparently needed to preview changes. So let's do it again. Minus minus example, preview changes. And as you can see, it is fixed. Fix command invocation, fix cargo run command for running examples. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. So I'm not gonna add any more. I'll propose the changes, meaning I'm going to create a merge request, or rather pull request. Create pull request. Say so code of conduct, what does the code of conduct say? Yeah, this looks like the, the standard stuff. So, I do allow edits by maintainers, no problem. GitHub automatically created a patch minus one branch and uh, seems like it created a fork of the Bevy repository. So I'm gonna create a pull request. And I want to encourage you to, to do the same if you find any problems in a project you're using and it's easy to fix, just make a pull request. Because then the next time won't have to deal with that kind of um, error you had to deal with or bug you had to deal with. So let's just go back to the examples, if I can find them. So here we are. We have two D rendering examples. Rendering a sprite. Let's take a look how that at how that looks like. So as you can see, you're not seeing anything. Not sure what this is supposed to mean. Let's take a look at the example. So we are adding the default plugins, adding a startup system, which is this setup system. Assets branding icon.png. Is there actually an is there a subdirectory called assets? Not sure where it gets the asset. So we have a as an asset server that magically appears out of nowhere. Probably uh, it probably had just has the default trait implemented. Let's take a look. Asset server or. Well, it, it, it probably didn't appear out of nowhere. It was probably added by add default systems. Um, how, how did it work? Add default plugins, not it's, it's plugins, not systems. So on the app builder, add, def add default plugins, 
seems to add some kind of asset so asset plugin that's it so this is where the asset server is coming from it's not magic so we have our commands we have the asset server and color materials then we load assets branding icon.png where are the assets coming from here assets branding maybe we need to go one directory up oh that's how it works so you need to run the commands in the in the root of the directory not the examples directory i'm i'm just thinking about if we can fix this readme to explain that you need to run it from the root of the project i'll just add an issue i guess So no existing issue that I can see about this problem. So let's create a new one. Uh, the example pulls readme doesn't explain that you should run the cargo command from the project root and from the project root doesn't explain how, how to run the examples properly I'm not I don't want to put the entire issue in the issue title. The the readme is missing the information that you need to run the cargo commands from the project root. I found this out because the sprite example because while because even though the sprite example runs when running cargo from the the examples directory it doesn't actually display the sprite because the relative path is from the project root so it needs to be run from the project root it would be great if this could be explained in the examples readme just because i'm lazy and i don't want to add bros pros to the readme otherwise i could have just made another pull request but i'm as, as i said i'm too lazy so this is what we've done we uh, we've taken a We've loaded a texture. Actually, shouldn't this have crashed earlier? Maybe this unwrap doesn't crash, I'm not sure. Then we spawned camera 2D components and sprite components with materials, add texture handle into. I think I need to absorb this slowly. 
Let's take a look at different examples. Sprite sheet. So now we actually have an animation. And they also did something to not completely hammer the CPU like in, in our previous example. Like the, the hello world example, greeting people example. But I, I don't really want to use sprites actually because Pong doesn't use sprites. So let's take a look. What other examples do we have? Some 3D examples like load model. Now this is just out of curiosity. I don't actually need 3D rendering functionalities. Although it would be quite interesting if this could just be ported from 2D to 3D later on. I think that might be possible. The parenting example where we can parent objects to each other. We don't need that as well, but yeah. So the, I think this cube is rotating and the second cube is parented in a relative position to the rotating cube, so it's rotating with it. Spawner, spawning items. I also no, don't need to do this, but at this point I'm just curious. What is it doing? Well, that's not what I would call a high frame rate, uh, I, I have to say. Yeah, these were like 10,000 cubes or something that have been spawned. So these were mostly examples that we've been going through. Asset loading, hot asset reloading, audio examples. Diagnostics. That that might be interesting. Custom custom diagnostics. Diagnostics system iteration count. Whatever that is. Let's take a look. We are using a print diagnostics plugin. Just visualizes your our diagnostics in the console. Okay, so you can get diagnostics, but the, it, it gets automatically printed because of this plugin. So we're setting up the diagnostic system, which just takes a diagnostics mutable resource and you just add a diagnostic system iteration count as this diagnostic ID should have a unique ID so this might be 
what could be used for things like frames per second or stuff like that. I'm not quite sure. It looks to me like in in, in service architectures, um, like stats, like something like stats D or Prometheus. Let's close this. So how to use the entity component system. Events. Full ECS guide, parallels queries. Oh, nice. So we can just use parallel iterators, probably similar to how Rayan works. Par iter for each. Move sprites according to their velocity. And we can just concurrently update the sprite positions, which is quite nice. Input events. Mouse input. We, we're definitely going to need input events. Probably not mouse input, but that doesn't really matter right now. Oh, it's just the left mouse button that they're working with. Mouse input. So just using the default plugins, we can access the mouse button input resource. Just check if the button is pressed. This is quite nice. And for keyboard inputs, it works almost almost the same. Just in this case with A presses. Yeah, you can def definitely see the A presses. Scenes, loading and s from and saving scenes to files. We don't need that right now. Shaders. That's just um, interesting to me, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really going to work with shaders. Although, maybe later on, shaders might be interesting. But to be honest, I know absolutely nothing about shaders. So, yeah, that's great. <laughs> user interface buttons nice let's keep that in mind I've never seen the init resource call before. Let's take a look at what init resource does. Init resource. Not really explained what it does. I mean, they weren't kidding. When they were saying in the uh, when in the introduction they were saying, st stability warning, Bevy aims to be a general purpose game engine capable of handling any 2D or 3D workload. However, Bevy is still in in its infancy. We are currently in the prototyping phase. Important features are missing and APIs will change constantly. If you are currently trying to pick an engine for your next big project, we recommend that you check out Godot Engine. It is currently much more feature complete and stable, and it is also free, open source, and scriptable with Rust. Phew. If you haven't been scared away yet, let's move on to learning some Bevy. We already did that. But you weren't kidding. 
This is absolutely undocumented. Let's take a look at the source code. So R is R has an implementation of from resources that is called and these resources are inserted to the resources. I guess if you call add resources this insert also happens. So it's just automatically calling the from resources. It's just a helper for manually calling f Oh, actually it's more than more than just that because with from resources you have access to the previous resources which if you use add resource you do not you do not have it's quite quite interesting so it's not just a convenience method it gives you more power by accessing this resource list it's it's like a global resource container i guess so let's go back to the example. We're adding we're adding button materials. Button materials is a struct with normal hovered and pressed materials. Mat a material is a handle. What is a handle? I really like docs.r as uh, because even though this API has n almost no documentation for some parts, you can still find out stuff about it. So in this case, we want to know what a handle is. A handle into a specific asset of type T. Handles contain a unique ID that corresponds to a specific asset in the assets collection. Oh. Now that well, well that didn't work, but this probably implements DREF or something like that. No, it doesn't. We can create a new handle. We can get a handle from something that is is something whatever gets a handle for the given type that has this handles ID. This is useful when an asset is derived from another asset. In this case, a common handle can be used to correlate them. Note this pattern might eventually be replaced by a more formal asset dependency system. Um, whatever. So what is what is happening? We have the, oh, we, we, could, we could also take a look at color material because that it also is, that this also seems to be a type from the library. A color material is a color with an optional texture. And I guess the, the handle is used because you can't use actual um, references to something in memory. You you need to you access it by its ID, because this is an this is data driven development. You store all the what's the name entities. So I guess texture is an entity. You store all the entities of the same type next to each other. And the handle is its ID, I guess. So that's it, at least that's my current mental model. I'm not sure if it's one hundred percent accurate. Accurate. But in the end, uh, let's take a look at color. Color is just RGBA. I think there might be some people on the internet who aren't really appreciating only supporting an RGBA color space, but that's a different story, I guess. So we have color materials. 
and handles of them because the color materials are shared in some way. The button materials implement from resources which is used by init resource. And what they do is they look for existing for an existing color material get mute assets color material so we we we're, we're taking the assets out of the resource the color material assets out of the resources and we are adding Mate new colors to those color material assets which then will probably return a handle that we can use so we're just when we're constructing them we're immediately putting them in the in the assets resource for color materials I'm not sure if they will be created automatically Let's take a look at resources. Get mute, no documentation whatsoever, but it can apparently fail. Resource index global. Let's take a look. So if the resource index is the global resource index, the default index is used. Uh, I'm actually not quite sure what's happening here and I, I don't want to dig into it further, although I could try uh, out what happens, but let's, let's take a further look at the example. So the from resource sources for button materials, which is used in init resource here, just adds color materials for a normal hovered and pressed and then puts them into the button materials. I guess a handle is just, yeah, it's just an ID. I already checked that. So one and handle ID is a UUID and a UUID is 16 bytes, so a 180 bit number. Which means one of these button materials is three times 16 long, which is 40, uh, 48, I think, 48 bytes long. Because the, the color materials are stored in the assets. I guess that's that's the the thing you need to get used to f uh, when you're working with data driven development, I guess. So the button system is after that. So let's let's first take a look at the startup system. The setup with our commands, we have an asset server which comes from the uh, some plugin and we have button materials which come out of nowhere it seems but i think they're probably getting created so we spawn a ui camera component default button components so we're spawning the button and setting the material to normal. Where's this material coming from? Button components. I have no idea where the button components are coming from. This turns out to be a much harder than I initially thought it would be. Just implementing Pong doesn't seem like such a, a hard task. Can 
my camera components and button components with children parent dot spawn text components so the who has these children maybe I need to take another look at the um, parenting example actually a first look parenting with children actually asset management I, I think there was some kind of yeah that's that's it asset loading and hot asset reloading let's first take a look at asset loading Okay, we loaded some assets. Now let's take a look at how this actually works. We have an MSAA with samples for resource, which probably is some kind of anti-aliasing or aliasing, anti-aliasing, aliasing, aliasing, anti-aliasing. We're adding the default plugins and this setup. The setup accesses the, the asset server. Uh, and assets, a mesh assets resource and a ma standard material assets resource. Load all assets in a folder like this. They will be loaded in parallel without blocking. So load asset folder, asset models monkey. I don't like this unwrap, but it, it, it doesn't work any other way, I guess. Well, actually, I'm, I'm not quite sure how we would s handle errors in this case. Probably we need to um, send events out that trigger something that is displayed on the screen. I mean, this is a completely different way of how, how one would program stuff, I guess. So in the assets and I think it was the models directory, models monkey. Yeah, that's it. Then an asset in the folder can be accessed like this. Take the asset server, which has just loaded the asset folder and we get a handle to the directory. Oh, nice. So we don't just directly access it. We later get the handle to it and now we can load isn't this the same code no it's load this is just the handle and this is the loaded asset so assets are loaded in the background by default which means they might not be available immediately after calling load if you need immediate access, you can load assets synchronously like this. Sphere handle, load synchronously. And this actually mutably access the accesses the meshes. All assets end up in their assets T collection once they are done loading. So how, how do I know when it's done loading? I'm not sure. You can also add assets directly to their asset storage. So this is the standard material, albedo color 050403. So now we can add entities to the words. Command spawn, spawning, right. So what I actually need to take a look at is the spawning example. Spawner. This example spawns a large number of cubes, each with its own changing position and material. This is intended to be a stress test of Bevy's ability to render many objects with different properties. For the best results, run it in release mode. Oh, that's why it was so slow. 
I'm going to try that again. Many times when you're working with Rust, you just forget to enable release mode and it's just it's just horrible and you you think about what how, how is that performant? How can that be fast? But you just forgot to 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 let the compiler do its work. So run minus minus release minus minus features x11 minus minus example spawner I'm curious how long it's gonna take but I think oh actually it should probably print how long it took but now I'm curious if we, if we get more than 0 0.5 frames per second or whatever it was. But quite a lot of dependencies, but that's to be expected, I guess. Oh, now it's actually running with 16 frames per second. 17. Much better. So in our setup, which is executed here, we spawn why is this always plural, light components? And why is everything in the prelude? Well, whatever. A component to bundle for light entities. What is a component bundle? Light, transform, translation, and rotation. A point light, color, FOV, and range. I'm not st still not quite used to how this works. So we have a translation. Four minus four dot zero five dot zero. The rest is fill in with default values, and then we spawn a camera. Transform new things disabled. I still don't quite get why this is in plural form. So and then we spawn. PBR components which are a PBR match, whatever that is. But I think that means we can go back to looking at different examples because I I just now want to find out how to actually display like a just not a cube but just a rectangle wasn't there some breakout example somewhere game breakout let's take a look without the release mode uh, for now because of the compile times. Okay, this looks promising. Although I'm not quite sure how this is breakout if it <laughs> if if I don't die But that, that looks like quite a good 
basis to work off of to implement Pong. Because it's, it's almost the same as Pong. So let's end this. Kill it without fire. We have a scoreboard. We have clear color. We have a pedal movement system, a ball collision system, a ball movement system, and a scoreboard system. But what I'm interested in for now is the startup system. We have color materials and an asset server. First, we spawn a t camera 2D component components camera 2d components maybe I need to look up entity component systems and find out what bundle actually means Architectural pattern, whatever, whatever, bundle, no, no bundle. So maybe it's just its own name for something. In any case, um, they have a UI and a 2D camera and sprite components. So we have a sprite, a mesh, a material, a main pass. It does implement default. Maybe, yeah. Let's let's take a closer look. So this is the ball. So spawn this with this. What does the with mean? Commands with? Query transformer skipping entities that do not have a T component. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. The with is on the commands commands with no explanation whatsoever we're getting the current entity Cannot add component because the current entity is not set. You should spawn an entity first. Then we push a component to the ah. Oh. So we are adding a component to an entity. So spawn a sprite component with a ball. No spawn a sprite entity with a ball component that's how it works no what oh so these are the components of a sprite
of a bone sprite in this in this case. So we spawn the sprite components, which are the these are the default components. So now I I'm I'm starting to get it. So when they are talking about components, these are just so if if I have a sprite or let's say I have a light a light has these components these components together are a light and bundle is just a statically typed collection of components so essentially this is a bundle and using the width we can add additionally uh, addition in additional components to our to what was until now a sprite so the ball is a sprite with a ball component and where are the paddles Oh, here's the paddle. So, yeah, here's the paddle. We have the sprite components of the paddle and the paddle component of the paddle and a collider component of the paddle. So, essentially what we what we need to do I don't. I don't think we actually need the the UI camera com camera components for now because the sprite component should work with the camera D two D components, I guess. So what does a camera two D component actually exist or or, or or consist of? We have a camera. In this case. Autographic projection, visible entities, transform, translation, rotation, and scale. And if we just don't do anything, it should just be fine with the defaults. For now, let's just add one sprite component. And like a square and a camera 2d component and we don't need any assets yet actually are the are the assets actually used for anything right now asset server they are used for the text for the fira sans bold font so if we don't have any font, we don't need any corresponding asset or any assets at all for that matter. So let's go back to our example. Remove our plugin and all our remove all that stuff and let's make a setup function that takes commands that's one thing it takes what else does it take nothing for now does it oh yeah actually a sprite component needs a material but maybe we can just use a sprite without color material. What on earth is that? Oh, sprite components is what, what we're looking for. This is quite a different way of thinking. It's, it's quite hard for me right now getting used to this.
So the material is a handle of color material and the default implementation of sprite components creates a quad handle render pipelines, render pipeline from whatever, draw sprite. So a default sprite, default material. What is a default material? Let's let's take a look at the color material. And the color and the default color is probably white, I guess. Yeah, that's what it is. So let's just for now let's take a look at the sprites again, sprite components. Scale. What is a scale? This is just a scale factor, I guess. Yeah. But where is the... Um, like the, the, the size of, of the component. Or the sprite. Let's take a look at the breakout example again. The ball has this material, has a translation and a sprite. Of thirty thirty, Wec two new, Wec two. Let's take a look at Wec two again. A two dimensional vector. So this is actually a mathematical vector, not what the vec in the standard library is which is a really bad name for a dynamic array, I have to say. So, we have a sprite, which is a vec2, which maybe, probably is just the x and y dimensions of the sprite. So we're just going to try that. Commands dot spawn sprite com. What is that? What is it complaining about? Oh, it's no, it's no correct syntax. Sprite components. We are going fi to fill it with the default. And semicolon is required. And we're going to add a sprite, which is a vec2 of, let's say, 10, 10. OK. And we also still need a, need to spawn a, UI, no, no, just a 2D a camera, 2D components. Just with default settings for now, or maybe just like this. And we need to actually call a constructor on VEC2 does it complain about expected sprite sprite new no sprite from so again a sprite has a size oh so this is the size And now we're going to add at startup system setup dot system. Now let's take a look if it renders uh, if it renders something. 
and it actually rendered a square, a white square. You can also make it have different um, proportions. Say 100, 200. Nice. So we now actually are able to render something. Let's make a, a helper uh, function. Create ball. Actually, actually not that. I'll call it spawn ball. And it takes a mutable slice of components, of commands, sorry. Uh, not, no, actually, it, it takes a mutable borrow of commands. I, uh, it's probably too, too late, um, so I'm making stupid mistakes when it comes to Rust syntax. So we are going to use, uh, we're just going to take this, put it here, and uh, we are going to spawn a ball with a mutable reference to the commands. And the ball has const um, size, F32 equals let's say 50 times 50 let's just let's just use that great we now have a ball. This is something to kind of celebrate. It just took about an hour from looking at the examples to being able to spawn a ball. But now we have it. We can spawn a ball. I'm just now thinking if it might be possible to, to move the ball around. Where does the sprite has have uh, like the sprite components? Where do they have their position? Maybe it's the tr uh, it's either the, the transform or the translation, I guess. Mm, translation seems to be three dimensional. It's three three dimensional. How do I actually? Oh, maybe the z axis does actually exist. Let's let's just create a translation just to test it out. Translation. Translation. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Translation is oh it's just it's just a tuple struct. Translation of VEC3 new from let's say 300.0, 300. So 300 in X direction, 200 in Y direction, and 0 in Z direction. And now it should be transformed to the right and and down. Well, actually, depending on how the X and Y coordinates work. Oh, actually, like the, the 300 was to the right and the 200 was up. 
So it's like a mathematical coordinate system, not like uh, usually with computers, you, you don't start in the left upper corner. It seems like you start in the lower left corner. So not sure how I would do an absolute positioning because right now it's just centered automatically. I mean, might, maybe we could we could go back to that and just just rotate it. Rotation ro is a rotation of what on earth is a quad? Mm, let's not do that. Rotation. We have an item. Oh, nice. So probably we could have created a translation. Yeah, actually, that's how we created a translation. So we we were stupid. We could have just created a translation like that with the new constructor. And in terms of the rotation, whatever quad is, quaternion representing an orientation. In any case, we can just, what on earth is a, an X rotation? I, I don't quite understand. Your pitch and roll. Oh, it's probably a rotation around the corresponding axis. So in my case, because we are looking at we are looking at this from the top, and the the like the x axis goes through out our image. So we need to rotate around the z axis. I'm not sure what kind of what what they use if they actually use uh, degrees or just the the um, two pi radian system so let's just tr try rotating by 45 degrees rotation from rotation z by 45 degrees is an is pi quarter so pi Actually, let's find out where pi uh, where I can find pi. Standard f thirty two consts pi. Whatever. Let's just use pi and include it. Can I include it? No, I cannot. Pi times or pi divided by four dot zero. Standard const standard f thirty two const pi. That should be it. Maybe I can also do do this. No, I cannot. I mean, we can just include it. Use standard f thirty two const pi. That's much better. If it actually works, does it? The semicolon is unexpected. Yeah, it's not a type, so I cannot use that, but I could do this. Can I? No, I cannot. Can I? So we have a rotation. And we accidentally deleted the defaults. Now what is it complaining about? Thank you, compiler. Remove this comma. That's exactly what I'm going to do.
So now I'm not, I'm not very happy with this actually. Let's let's remove that. Let's do it like this. So now it should be rotated by 45 degrees. Yeah, exactly. So it is in radians. And I think I'm gonna wrap this up for this video because it's now another hour that has passed. And I mean, probably the, um, the next step would be to start including time somehow and start rotating this or maybe use um, keyboard input to move the ball around by changing the um, translation component of this ball. Not sure how to a actually access the ball later on, but we'll see. Quite cu curious, actually. We'll fi find out then. If you've watched so far and you've actually seen both videos of this series, I'm very surprised, but thank you a lot. And I hope it was as much or more fun for you to watch me do this as it was for me to do it. And hopefully we'll see each other in the next video.